Hello, everyone. It's Mike Trim, WPTV Morning Anchor. I am joined by Cast Construction Vice President Jim Reinhart, and we are speaking about what happened this morning in Miami-Dade County, the 12-story partial condo collapse. And, and uh, Mr. Reinhart, just want to thank you for your time and just bringing you in as kind of a subject matter expert. Cast Construction, very well known in the area, the construction of uh, two city plaza and one West Palm, those projects happening right now in West Palm Beach, 30-story uh, projects your company well-versed in those type of operations. And uh, just first and foremost, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Mike, absolutely. Jim, I just wanted to ask you, um, when it comes to that type of material, that type of uh, a structure, as we are searching for answers and the correct questions to ask, what exactly are we looking at when we see a picture like that and say, gosh, you know, what happened here? How was it built? What, what expertise could you lend to help us understand things? Just a little bit more of the questions we're asking today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, it's difficult to conjecture what could have caused something like this. It's catastrophic, obviously. Um, you know, there's a there are a lot of things here in South Florida that are unique and you know along along the coastline, particularly. Um, you know, we build we structure a very corrosive environment with the with the salt air. That's typically a problem that we see with you know buildings with some age on them. Uh, Broward and Dade counties, Miami Dade Building Department and, and Surfside Building Department have a uh, forty year recertification program. Which um, this building was completed in nineteen eighty one, so it's actually up for its forty year recertification right now. I, I believe that may actually have been in process on this project. Um, and, you know, some of the things that they're looking at are, you know, are the foundations in good condition? Is there any kind of soil subsidence or anything? Um, you know, what's the condition of the, the structure? You know, something we see commonly on these with, uh, you know, the corrosive environment of salt air um, you know, salt and chlorides are, are super corrosive to steel, which, of course, in a concrete structure like this is the, the reinforcing that's all inside the concrete. So if any of that gets exposed, the steel starts to corrode and it swells and, and you know, it begins a long, slow path of, of degradation of the structure. So those are some of the reasons why the 40 year recertification uh, program is in place. Uh, you know, it's difficult to know, impossible really right now, what would have caused something like this, you know, and then of course there's, you know, the kinds of things that could just be random events, you know, did, did you know, truck back into a column that caused a progressive collapse of a section of the structure, like, you know, just things that we really can't know, you know, and in my mind, like all, all we can do is just thank God that there weren't, you know, potentially more casualties than there are and, and be thankful for the first responders to help out in the, the you know, with, with those that, that did, you know. Absolutely. And with, with your expertise in construction this close to the water, this close to the beach, when you see a high rise condo that close to the beach, you wonder, OK, if something collapsed, what about the foundation? Like, what is it uh, in a building like that that's put down for a foundation to build from the ground up that's so secure, you would think? Right. So, sure. So typically uh, buildings like this were and are uh, built on auger cast friction piles. So essentially, um, you know, it's designed by a, an engineer with expertise in, in soils based on tests done of the soils in site. Test piles are done. And essentially what this is, is it's a, you know, large diameter drilled hole anywhere from say 14 to 24 or more inches in diameter. Um, and then a reinforcing steel cage is lowered into that hole. And then the, the hole is filled with grout concrete essentially. Um, and then the foundations of the structure are built on the top of those piles. You know, in, in most cases they're designed as a, a friction pile. Um, so that what, what you're looking at is it's driven down into the, not driven, but drilled down into the ground and then poured. And then the, the friction of the walls of that pile interfacing with the soils uh, creates a resistive force that holds the building up. And then, you know, pile caps are big 
sort of blocks of concrete and reinforcing steel that tie the tops of all those piles together. And then the building is built on top of that. Um, and these are, you know, historically very reliable foundation structures. Um, they're, you know, short of, you know, some type of, um, you know, geologic type of event or something that didn't show up in borings that had been done on the site or testing that was done on the soils. It's difficult to imagine why, you know, building like this would function for 40 years and then all of a sudden fail catastrophically. You know, settlement is is one thing on the order of, you know, maybe half an inch or an inch or two. But, you know, this is obviously, you know, much more of an acute event than that. When it comes to building here on the east coast of Florida, at least, are people are asking, are sinkholes a possibility? Is that even a possibility in that kind of area? Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm certainly not going to put myself out there as a, a sinkhole expert, right? But we've all seen what happens with with sinkholes. Um, you know, it, it, it is, it, you can't be, it can't be ruled out, put it that way, right? I mean, if, if, you know, if you think of what the foundation system is that we just talked about, essentially a building sitting on concrete blocks, sitting on piles that are driven down or drilled down into the ground and are in friction, if the ground that all that's relying on subsides, then there's nothing underpinning the building. So, um, you know, I certainly have not seen that happen, haven't been involved in any in any case like that, but, you know, it's, it can't be ruled out at this point. Of, of course. Um, and your uh, an area of expertise with construction and, and you know, you, sometimes you have to have more construction on top of an existing building. It appeared, uh, you know, there was proof work being done, but what, when it comes to codes and when this was built, what's different now that you have to be versus 1981 and a 40 year inspection 40 years later? What do you have to do differently now to secure a structure? Well, I, I mean, really the, the, the biggest thing that's changed over the last 40 years, and a lot of it's a result of, of Andrew, which of course is you know almost almost 30 years ago now, really pertains more to the envelope of the structure than or of the building than it does to the actual structure of a building, right? Things like how is the roof adhered to the building so it doesn't blow off in a hurricane, you know, how how are the windows designed and attached so that they don't blow out in a hurricane, but those have been some of the biggest um, changes over that period of time. But none of those really seem like they would be related to what we're looking at here. Yep. Is there anything else? Uh, I know you're you have a tight schedule today, and, and we thank you for joining us. Is there anything else that jumps out at you? I mean, obviously, other than the catastrophic damage and you know the the rescue efforts, is there anything that jumps out of you out at you with your area of expertise that you know we should be asking about or that? could answer people's questions a little bit better about this catastrophe? Honestly, no. I mean, I've, you know, I've spent a little bit of time this morning just pouring over the, the, the pictures and, um, you know, the, the video of the collapse from the surveillance camera from the adjacent building. And it's, you know, it's difficult to determine. I mean, you can see that in the video that the collapse sort of starts from the center of the building and moves out from there. But, you know, I, there's nothing really in that that, gives cause for any particular line of speculation as to as to what might have been the cause. What else would you like to add, if anything, Jim? I don't think really anything else, you know, just our, our uh, thoughts and prayers go out to, you know, the folks affected by this and, and just very thankful that, um, you know, there wasn't more loss of life than, than what's been reported. It's really uh, pretty amazing. And, and uh, you know, we think we just need to be thankful for that. And, and again, to the, the first responders that, that help with those injuries on site and, you know, the, the bravery to go into a building that is partially collapsed and, and you don't know why, you know, so. We have one more quick question and then we'll chat up here. As far as there's a four year recertification that you mentioned in the inspection with that, how stringent are OSHA? Uh, that that's a, a organization obviously that deals with kind of structures and buildings like how often are, are they randomly inspecting a building like this or is it just every four years and that's it 
So, so OSHA is, is uh, occupational safety, right? So when it comes to construction, while we have any construction type of operation or repair um, work in process, they're going to be very diligent about making sure that we're doing things properly to protect the safety of the folks that are doing the work. Um, when it comes to safety to occupants of a, of a building, really that comes down to the uh, building departments. And, you know, I have to point out that, um, you know, Broward and, and Dade counties really kind of lead the way with the 40 year recertification process. There, to my knowledge, there isn't really a, a more stringent version of that any, anywhere out there. So, you know, the fact that the 40 year recertification is, is a requirement by the by these building departments, I, I think, is a very effective approach. And, you know, we, we're not seeing this, you know, as a common occurrence. And it, it, it is a very uh, difficult environment. You know, anybody that spends any time on the beach knows that the, the sand is a shifting thing and the salt environment is very corrosive. So it's a a challenging environment for a building to, to sustain in. So I, I'm, you know, it's it, until we understand really what what the cause of this was, it's difficult to try to think about, you know, how how we turn that into, you know, sort of future prevention. Jim, I really appreciate your time. If there wasn't anything else, to, uh, uh, we will uh, be in touch, and we appreciate your expertise for this stream yard today. Sure, great talking to you, Mike. So long.